Okay, today let's take a look at rebuilding suspension on a original Henry J. Okay, and with the suspension supported, like we showed earlier, where there's no load on it, hopefully you guys can see how much that's moving. So yeah, and then you gotta look at which joints are actually doing that. And this one is much worse. That's why I didn't like going down the highway. So the primary issue was uh, kingpins in this, which pretty common. We have all the tools at this shop to do that. It also had some link pins that were going bad, so they were the ones that were bad were hard to find. So we opted to get an entire rebuild kit from Cantor Auto and just rebuild everything. Okay, first thing we want to consider if you're going to do suspension work is safety. Um, you may be doing it on the ground, which I, I mean, that's your choice. Uh, I use a four post lift, one, it's what I have. Most of the time, you do a two post for, or single post if you're really old school. But anyway, to have the suspension drop free and that. But no matter which way you're doing, the thing you got to consider is what are you going to do with that spring? Your suspension is held under pressure. So you'll notice when you lift it that the suspension drops down, it's against a rubber bumper, and there's still spring tension in that. And that's no matter which suspension system you're working. Now, Henry J has the coil spring tucked up in a pocket in the frame to the lower control arm. Now, the manual basically says to support the car, use a floor jack and just lower unbolt the lower control arm with the jack under the arm and drop it away. Read your manual, don't just take my word. Now, I tried on one side to do it the way manual says and sometimes that works just fine. There isn't much spring pressure. I will not do that again. Um, I actually just had to reconfigure a spring tool I had to actually get inside the uh, shock hole. But the right tool, like spring compressor, like showing here, you can actually get all the tension out of that spring. Now, make sure that tool's in good shape. If that comes loose, people get hurt. So, and unfortunately, the style I'm using is pretty old school. Um, another tool inherited from Grandpa. And, you know, we used to use in the shop, but it's still in good working shape. Yeah, get your spring taken care of, and then everything starts unbolting from that. So all the joints on this type of car are actually just a threaded rod. So what would be a ball joint in a modern, or more modern, 60s, 70s, um, but it's more just a ball, those are ball joint assemblies, these are link pin, and they're fairly easy to take apart because it's just threaded and odds are the threads are worn out from just moving back and forth all the time. So what you see me doing here is I've already driven out the kingpin and I'm actually working on the spindle itself and I use Acme thread and then uh, their pilot bearing bushing drive kit so for blind holes but they have nice shouldered uh, units that will actually grab just the bushing and there's actually a very specific reason I use Acme thread, but that's a whole nother video. So in part of why I do kind of this press type method is it's a little more controlled. I'm not beating on the spindles as much. And removing it's not nearly as big of a deal. You, I mean, you're throwing out that bushing anyway, but I'm also figuring out what size I need and how it's going to go before I drive them in. So this is more kind of a trial run, because the bushings you run in, yes, you're going to ream them if you damage them a bit putting in, and you're probably reaming out that damage. But nowadays, we don't just have the local parts store run us out a new set of kingpin bushings. And in fact, a lot of that stuff's getting not only hard to find, but uh, and like this, it's hard to find a shop that can do it. So the shop I have... We're in kind of a large geographic area that's not not too high of population. But anyway, 
as far as I know, there's two, maybe three shops that actually do um, kingpins. And the other two I can think of are actually machine shops, really old school machine shops. But most shops now will just take and send a whole um, spindle kingpin assembly into a machine shop and have this done. And if you're watching this kind of just figuring if you're going to do this at home, you certainly could. There's, you might not have all these tools, but uh, kingpin reamer is definitely one you're going to need. And that's a little hard to find. In fact, the kingpin reamer I'm using here for this project was one I inherited from my grandpa. So it would have been in our shop we had for years. It's just kind of a little bit smaller size and and less common, but you can see it has a guide piece that goes on the opposite ends. You ream one side at a time, but for some reason that guide pin was off a little bit. I didn't realize at first. It's only a few thousands, but it uh, made to where the reamed holes didn't line up. So I had to do some, put everything in the lathe and true it up. And But with that process, my first thought is just buy a new one. And I really couldn't find the correct size available online. So if you, you're you looking for you know kingpin reamers you may or may not find it depending on what vehicle you're doing or you'll be looking for a while um, and sorry I don't know anywhere that would rent such a tool so um, it's not like AutoZone rents kingpin tools so I did have a slight problem with fitment in this kingpin kit and that was the the original has just a lock wedge that's driven in and then kind of swedged in place and most of the time now you use a tapered bolt like you see and the whole threaded area had the correct taper like the original pin but once the kingpin is in place it didn't allow the thread to come all the way through so both sides the lock pin had to be ground down that taper extended all the way back until you could actually put a nut on it so it's something to be aware of make sure everything's fitting as you assemble and you know make things fit sometimes these are a little more universal just trying to fit a whole bunch of models I don't know why this one is as wrong as it was but you can see the finished result of machining it down and should slide through such that your nut will fit. So a car like this with all the link pins, all those threaded rods that uh, have so many chances of binding up, either the caps being too tight, uh, things out of alignment a little bit, really make sure everything moves freely before you put the spring in. And yeah, putting the spring in on any kind of car like this with limited space is difficult use lots of jacks, straps, whatever it takes to safely and slowly put that into place. And lastly, do an alignment and road test vehicle and you should be back on the road. And thanks for watching.